Welcome to the next Q&A for trauma healing and life counseling. In this video, I will answer question 23. Dear Gopal, what can you say from a perspective of a trauma therapist about spiritual concepts of energetic vampires and toxic relationships that mean that a low energy partner sucks out the high energy partner? Thank you for your work. Best regards. As soon as you realize the nature of relationship as such, all these questions dissolve. It is more about the space from where this question arises than about answering the question on a formal level. Because have you ever seen an energetic vampire? Have you ever seen such a thing? And if, if you have seen something like that, have you made absolutely sure that it is not a part of you projected? And also toxic relationship or toxic relationships there are no toxic relationships. A relationship is always healing. If something is toxic, it is not a relationship, it is a process of creating distance. And by asking this question, it already shows that you are not connected because you have to project a danger onto the outside that, mm, rationalizes your distance. And what is distance? Distance means that you are not honest, that you are not truly sharing with your partner what it's there. And that means that you have never done that completely in your life because you have not experienced that in your childhood. And to keep up a coherent view of the world in yourself, you have to project enemies and danger onto the outside. I'm not saying that there's no danger on the outside, but what you are talking about or asking is a projection. Because if you really would see that, you would not ask. So there's something that is not communicated. And that what is not communicated is being replaced by the projection. So this is a more broader view of the situation. And to be more precise, um, I have never seen energetic vampires. I even do not believe that someone can be mm, sucked out from the outside without a part of himself that actually wants that. Or it may be completely unconscious. Because if you want to suck something from somewhere, you need to plug in there. And if there's no plug, you cannot suck. So it's obvious. So there, it is a way of a relationship if something like that happens. And it is not so that, uh, that there is somebody sucking the other. This is not the truth. It is the responsibility of both exactly to 50% if such a um, distorted way of contact happens in a relationship. And this energetic Sucking is also something that probably you have, you have never seen. Maybe you are clairvoyant. I'm not. Then you may see flows of energy. I don't know. I don't know if this exists. It's uh, written in the books. Yes, but I have never seen something like that. But what I definitely know is that if someone 
draws attention to himself. Then there must be on the other side someone who allows that. So if you are forced, your attention, if you let someone force your own attention to the other person or to the story the person is talking about, of course, then you lose energy. But it's not because the other sucks you. It is because you don't stop something that is not good for you. If someone beats you, you, you will stop it. And if someone forces your attention to his meaningless blah, blah, and you allow that, then of course you feel weak afterwards. But it's, it's not that the energy really goes there. It's more that you have to suppress your rage and your anger. And this is what costs all the energy. Maybe you are actually very um, in rage or even hate because this conflict has not been solved since childhood. And the solution is very simple. The solution is very simple. If you start sharing what's inside of you, all toxic, distorted ways of contact will end immediately. And this means being with yourself, looking what's there. And um, this is enough. And sharing it. This is, for example, it is too much for me to listen to your stories endlessly. I cannot do that anymore. Very simple. Or you just um, stand up and walk away. It's the same thing. Also, you could um, ask someone directly. If, if you realize that the one is talking and talking and talking, you can ask him, how do you feel right now? Because forcing the attention of someone else to my story is not a real exchange. It also doesn't nourish me. Because it's not an, it's, we don't, we don't hear something from our inside, from our emotions. And if this process starts, then all these structures will, will disappear and both will be nourished if there's a, a real exchange. And that's why I developed the honest sharing. If you are interested in that and you want to drop this con these ideas of being victim or being the, the evil one, then study the honest sharing. And all these questions will become absolutely irrelevant. <laughs>